uh, for you guys putting this on for the basketball coaches in the area. So I want to say really thank you for for the coverage that you give the high school basketball down here on the coast. And uh, I know all the other coaches are grateful for that as well. Well, we're glad to do it. Uh, eight years at Chickasaw, is that right? Eight you years. Time, They're from the start. Just the growth as a school is uh, is, is pretty unique, and you know most people don't get the opportunity to start at the at the baseline of a, a system, a, a new program, a new athletic program, and to see the the growth that we've had every year. We've had some setbacks as well, but to to be able to take those processes and learn from them, and uh, to be able to try to provide the best we can for our kids is pretty pretty unique. So I take that as a process. Not apply it to our sports programs and definitely basketball programs trying to um, just cultivate the talent that we do have and try to give the kids the best opportunities we have to play sports um, it's a reward for me every day I mean I coach this is I mean that's that's the icing on the cake for me I mean it's the education for me and the seven to three job that I do but the basketball part and that's you know coaches be part and so that's why I enjoy doing what I do because you know I do this part for free honestly I would if I had to. Coach, uh, I know this year you have a new principal. Mr. Cox moves over from Baldwin County, former basketball coach. How if you know has it been any different with him being there? I know he probably sticks his head in the door a little bit more often. Very very different. Um he's a very um hands-on charismatic leader. And um, we actually had a talk when he first got hired and um, we were talking basketball. And he told me, he said, I used to coach at Baldwin County. I said, you know what, I do remember you on the sideline with Coach Hunter. Yeah. And I said, well, I apologize if I gave y'all the tea because I was, I was probably known for giving more teas in the association <laughs> than anybody. But uh, Mr. Cox has been uh, instrumental in changing our school culture. And I think you're going to see that on the basketball court. I think it 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 goes all the way down to there. Because he's very involved with students. Um, he's very he'll step into practice and watch, and he'll go out and clap his hand for guys and say, "Hey, good job, stay tough, stay tough." And to see your principal do that uh, inspires me as a coach as one. And secondly, the kids really buy into that. They like that. So it's been a pleasant um, surprise to have him as our leader at Chickasaw High School. Coach, you've also had an opportunity not to have to coach both teams this year. I know that can be a little bit overwhelming and stressful at times uh, for a coach to have to turn around and have a girls' practice, then have a boys' practice. Uh, talk about the relief that you're feeling just having to focus, uh, knowing that the girls are in good hand, but just focus on your boys' basketball team. All right. Huge relief. Last year, um, the game days were all the same. I got a chance to pregame my JV boys, which I don't want to make them feel insignificant, but out of the three programs, they're, they're the third most important program. I didn't get a chance to pregame my girls because as soon as the JV game is over with, we got two minutes in the locker room to review what we talked about before that game. And then the boys, it was girls going in, boys going out, referees calling for captains. I'm coming out of the locker room and we're talking and we're going. Uh, the relief has been, um, as I said, I do basketball for free for boys. I, I'll take money out of my own pocket and pay somebody to do the girls. <laughs> I mean, um, just too much to do and not enough time in the day to, to get all of it covered. And i um, definitely excited for Coach Winston coming down from Satsuma to being a part of the program. And the girls have already gravitated towards him. And um, I think that program is going to be fine. Uh, but as far as the boys program, I'm excited. Um, we got some young, young guys this year. Um, we only got three seniors. We graduated six seniors last year and fell short of where we should have been. Uh, but this is probably the most athletic team. I, and I'll take the athletic kids that don't know which way to go during the game versus having some kids that are have some different skill sets but don't ever reach that potential because they're limited in other areas. So. I think this this is probably going to be my, my most exciting year. I, I'm a little more laid back this year and approaching the kids a lot differently, and they love that that side of me. So 
I'm going to embrace that part of it and, and move forward. Right. Who are the key uh, returning players do you have coming back? We have uh, Demarion Hicks, and Demarion Hicks played limited minutes last year uh, as a bench player. Probably played the most minutes coming off the bench as a freshman last year. Um, extremely talented. Super competitive is, is is I like that I like that quality about him. He does not like to fail, and he's emotional. So we're we're working on curbing those emotions. He's he's playing football right now. And he's one one of our better young guys at playing football, and um, so he he's gonna bring a lot back to us. I'm gonna put some I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on him to be be a leader, even with that some of our elder guys that are left on the team. Coach, what, what's your stance on academics? What do you do to ensure and making sure that your athletes are actually, you know, staying eligible and stuff like that academically? When I'm not in the gym, I'm in everybody's classroom <laughs> all day. And I go all the way down to my middle school. Wow. I'm probably harder on my middle school guys than I am on my, my high school guys. Um, checking, asking. Uh, I'll talk to a teacher right in front of them so they'll know, is he behaving correctly today? How's his grades in your classroom? He's doing fine, Coach. Or, Coach, you need to step out and talk to him, and I'll pull him out, pull him out of there, and, and we'll have a quick heart-to-heart. -heart. And um, I hit him where it hurts. The kids love to play basketball. And I say, well, I will take this away from you because if you want this and you can't get your education, you're not going to be a successful student, a successful citizen when you get out of here. So try and put things in priority and try and make sure that they understand academics first. And we want to win, but I tell our guys, I want to win. I, I, I like to win, and I hate losing more than I like winning. But I would like for our kids to be able to win every day in the school building. And so in a lot of days, we fail. And so they, we re hit the reset button the next day, and we get right back at it. So I do a lot of suicides in PE. Um, you know, I, I'll tell Mr. Cox, our principal, I said, let me, let me take care of this before he gets to you. He says, as long as you take care of it and that kid gets straight, we're fine. So we work well together, and we got some great, great kids. I'll just be honest with you. I love my Chickasaw kids to death, and that's why you probably won't see me take a job in Mobile County or Baldwin County. I love it that much, and I believe what I'm doing is, is the right thing to do, and I believe where I'm at is the exact right place that I'm supposed to be at. So I'm just determined to succeed. And every year I stay quiet. I don't talk a lot about my program a lot, but I just try and stay quiet. And then when we hit it at some point, I'm still going to remain quiet. I let my kids get all the accolades for, for doing that because I believe in letting our kids shine that way. So one of my biggest sayings to our kids is the scheme does not win you a championship. Players do. So when we continue to grow our players, and that's what we're working on, growing our players, then no matter what scheme you put in, we'll be a championship caliber team. How do you use that saying that you just said, that you hate to lose more than you like to win, to help encourage your players to play better and have that same attitude for themselves? Well, when we get to practice, we, we, we do it in, in every single play. And so when, when we don't practice the correct way, and, and kids are kids. They, they come to practice, they, they won't tuck the shirt in. I'm like that, you know, tuck your practice shirt in. I spent money on that stuff, you know. <laughs> Tuck it in, look nice. You walk through the doors, walk through the doors the correct way. I start my flex lines, and so I'll stand back and observe. Not a lot of hollering and preaching at first. So this is the expectation. We have team meetings. This is how we're going to practice. We don't take voluntary water breaks. You don't jog in the locker room and go use the bathroom in the middle of our flex drill. And so we'll watch that, and so when a kid does it wrong, that, that's when they cut, see the coach comes out. Blow the whistle, fiery mad. Do it over again. This is not the level that a championship team would do. We don't miss layups and warm-ups. We don't do a lot of janking and joking in line. So we just reset it, and we go back again. And then when they get it, and I'll say, stop. I said, that's what a winning team would do. They would do it the right way. So just teaching. It's just the same as I would use it as an educational tool. How I want them to be, I'm going to teach. You know, I do a little preaching, but teach and teach. And sometimes they don't get it. And I know that sometimes the kid hadn't grown enough or his athletic ability is just not, not good enough. And so, again, still go back and teach, you know, and that's just my philosophy on, on getting the program where it needs to be. And, you know, Coach, you saying that, you know, that makes those, those kids, those athletes be productive citizens. Correct. 
you can really rather they go play sports or not in college or at a, the next level. But it makes them productive, you know, citizens in wherever they're going to live at. So that that's that's great. Yeah, and that warms. I mean, that's that's my payoff. I mean, if I don't win a, a state championship, and if I don't win a region title, and I'm hoping to get both of those someday, <laughs> um, and I and I want to do it where I'm at. On that uh, note, Coach, uh, as far as uh, your area is concerned, who do you feel our teams to be? Alberta is going to be improved. Uh, he had nothing but juniors last year, and they're a scrappy bunch, and Coach Thompson does a good job. So they're going to be uh, a hair in our thorn, so to speak, um, compared to wise. College Hill is still the team to beat in our area. Um, we have to get over that hurdle of they play a different style of basketball than our kids play. And some of the, some of the, the things that they do is, is where I want our kids to grow at. And so um, this year, we probably better get them this year, but we're young as well, and they'll be young. Because um, I know down the road, they're going to be pretty good too. So um, it's a pretty wide open area. I, I would say we should win it, um, but we're going to have to earn it. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be an area where uh, you got an area game, you can just give yourself those wins at home and on the road, you can fight for it. It's, I think all three games, all, all three teams have an even chance to win the area. Coach, thank you. Good luck this year. Thank you, guys.